your eye on the timestamp in the top left corner. It's 3.26 in the morning. And there it skipped to 4.09. Okay, wait, so it went from 3.26 yeah. to 4.09. 409. Yeah, it's crazy. 43 minutes edited out of the surveillance video. These aren't drug smugglers. These are people who came to enjoy a vacation here. Was there any text messages? Any link to any drug syndicates? Any link whatsoever with any of these passengers who've ever been charged previously in Canada with drug trafficking offenses? Wow. Uh, welcome back to the show, everybody. That was a sneak peek at W5's one-hour special, Cocaine Cargo. It documents the story of five crew members and seven passengers on a chartered Canadian flight who were detained in the Dominican Republic after 200 kilograms of cocaine was discovered on their plane. Here to tell us more about the investigation is W5's host and managing editor, Avery Haynes. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> Avery, this story has been all over the news for the last couple of months. So for those of us who, who don't know, could you really tell us what happened and how the crew and the passengers could be detained with no charges left? Yeah. It is a blockbuster like something right out of a movie. And it all began back on April 5th. So the five crew members of the Pivot Airline were planning to fly home on a charter flight with seven Canadians. Everything was completely normal. Yeah. A little beep goes off, a little light goes off inside the airplane just as they're about to take off. And it warns about a compartment that's opened and it's called the avionics bay, which is just underneath the, bay, underneath the plane. And the aircraft mechanic goes in, unhatches the, that, that little compartment yeah. and finds a bag. And what you're looking at is the cocaine that was found inside that bag. But initially there was just one bag. They immediately call the RCMP Dominican authorities and say, wow. we think there's a, they thought there was a bomb on the plane. Mm. This is brand new information that nobody knows except for you guys right now, but when, when, when the Dominican authorities came, they pulled off four bags and they told the crew, you're good, you can go home now. The aircraft mechanic looked back in that plane and there were four more bags inside what? the plane. The, they, the crew says, had they left with those bags inside the plane, there would have been a disaster because that plane was not designed to have all these that duffel weight. bags, yes, right. 210 kilos of cocaine inside. And from there, you think like that's an extraordinary story. From that's only the beginning. That, yeah, yeah, that's a that's snippet. just that's the, the very quick snippet. And they ended up being uh, detained for eight months. They were just freed last week. Uh, both them and the the seven passengers on board were detained for eight months. First in prison in the most extraordinarily horrendous conditions, and then living in a safe house. Well, as we saw in that clip, 43 minutes of surveillance video was yeah. edited out. Um, so tell us about the flight attendant, kind of turned, uh, you know, detective, who uncovered and found that surveillance video and that blip. Yeah. Christina Carello, I know she's watching right now, Christina oh, is. Wow. Um, oh. Just to, on, on her story, for just a moment, can you imagine if you stop and think about who could you be uh, trapped in a foreign country, in a house that you work with for eight months, which is what she had to do. She's the only woman and the only oh person who spoke gosh. Spanish. Mm. And she was trapped with four of her coworkers uh, for these eight months. So that in itself is an extraordinary story that we'll be talking about on Saturday. But they've been given uh, you know, hours and hours of surveillance footage uh, from the prosecutor who's trying to keep them in jail, keep them in the country. And everybody looked at this. Investigators looked at it, lawyers looked at it. Christina watched it, and instead of looking at the plane, she decided to look at the timestamp at, wow. the, at the top Smart. and recognize that there yeah. was a jump in the time. Yeah. Then she found buried deep in the files the same time frame that was from a different angle that somebody forgot to edit out. And in that 43 minutes, Whoa. you see a Punta Cana uh, airport truck pulling up, people jumping off, you see the truck pulling up to the avionics bay, you see bags, big duffel bags piling up, and then you see them disappearing into the plane the night before the plane was set to take off. So yeah. she's she's the one who found, and, and by the way, the uh, there's airport, or there's hotel security that shows that no one, uh, not the passengers nor the crew, left the hotels in the middle of the night. So none of them physically put those drugs on that plane. Wow. 
So the crew luckily has finally returned safely uh, to Canada. What what was that like? And did W5 have any role in, in yeah. making that all happen? Do you know, when we first started this investigation, I thought it was going to be an access piece. I thought, you know, I'd worked a really long time to get them to feel comfortable with letting us come to their safe house. They disrupted about $26 million worth of cocaine coming to Toronto. And so there were people who wanted to hurt them. Mm. They had to move to five different safe houses. They wouldn't allow us to even know where they were living until they got, uh, until we landed there. This, you can see the crew getting reunited. Wow. With, I have sure. Oh, so goodness. that's the pilot. That's his wife wow. who's also a pilot. Um, and they're all reuniting with each other after eight months of not being able to, to hold each other. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Very quickly, did you learn anything about um, who was supposed to meet the plane on the other, like when the it came side. back with the drugs? And that's where I say like the investigation part of this is to me the most extraordinary because that's all I could think about is it's one thing that these people are trapped there, mm -hmm. but somebody was planning to pick yes. up 210 kilos of drugs at Toronto's wow. Pearson Airport. And so we followed the money on this and I will say that we we had some very good success in investigating some of the passengers who were on that flight. Um, why would why would a bunch of people from Edmonton fly commercial to Toronto to pick up a charter that cost a hundred thousand dollars to fly to the, to Punta Cana? Mm -hmm. um, who paid for it? And we did manage to find out uh, who paid for it, and so we paid that person a little visit, and that will be in our investigation. Well, well, on... well. <laughs> How's that oh, for a team? Wow. Wow. say journalism matters. Avery, thank you so much for joining us. Hey there, wasn't that great? Do you know where you can find some equally good content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with discussions, debates, and some laughs. Head there now, like and subscribe.